Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn with me in your King James Bible to Romans chapter 8. The scripture verses that we will be looking at, I ask you to follow me along in the scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible. The Lord has stirred something. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 28, on to verse 39, finished chapter. Follow me along in the King James Bible. The real Bible. Beginning at verse 28. This one you ought to know by heart. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Do you love God? Do you love God when everything's going good? Do you love Him when things just seem to fall apart on you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. You are saved, born again, of the church of the living God, the body of Christ. You're predestinated. It's not the Calvinistic, this one's going to hell, this one's being saved, no matter what, no matter what, it's none of that. If you're lost, you're predestinated to go to hell. If you're saved, you're predestinated to go to heaven to be with the Lord. <clears throat> if you're lost, you can get saved. Beg your pardon here for a second, brethren. Yeah, yeah. If you're lost, you can get saved. The Lord can save you. You have to come to him as a broken, contrite sinner. You have to know that you ain't good and that you can't save yourself. And when you come to him broken, admitting to the Lord that you are a sinner, admitting and knowing that you are no good and that you cannot save yourself, you will trust on the Lord and call upon him to save you. And as I've said to you many times before, calling on the name of the Lord is the ultimate shoe of humility. Because the less is calling on the greater. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified you're sealed until the day of redemption you have Christ living within you you're a part of his body what 
What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? You are elect in that you are saved. Your election is in your salvation. Not that you were elected as Calvin teaches. No, that's ridiculous. No. Your election is in your salvation. You are saved. You are the elect. And today in the time of the Gentiles, it's both Jew and Gentile. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. <clears throat> Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. <clears throat> for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Are you in the Psalms there, brother, sister? Are you in the Psalms? Are you in the Psalms once a day, at least? As I've said to you before, I, um, with a lot of what's going on nowadays, I'm drawn to the Old Testament because we can see a lot of things that happened before that were there for our learning, which things that are proceeding and happening today. <clears throat> Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. The temple of God today is our bodies. God lives within you. There's a dispensational difference there. It's 
continue. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. Brother, sister of the Church of the Living God, have you considered that it is a mercy that the Lord will answer you? The Creator of heaven and earth and all things therein answers you, me. <clears throat> when thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way. O oh Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 56 <clears throat> Hmm Oh, I was talking to a fine young brother today. Finally got a hold of him. And um, he made the comment of just how much right now is going on. And how the Church of the Living God is going through some stuff right now, obviously. In comparison to the uh, to the accounts in Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, we here in the states, like I have said to you on many occasions, in comparison to the accounts in Fox's Book of Martyrs, <clears throat> you um, what's going on today uh, with the Church of the Living God <laughs> falls quite short in comparison. But nonetheless, these days are evil. This is the power of darkness. And this is their hour. And we are seeing so many things. Aren't we? I know uh, Brother Matthew Landau did a wonderful, wonderful um, video where he read out of Joshua, you know. Wonderful video, wonderful video, wonderful video. Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. 
Hmm. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O Thou Most High. What time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. <coughs> Get a load of this one. You looking at this one? Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. <laughs> They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. When they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger. Cast down the people, O oh God. A God who gets angry. <laughs> thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know. For God is for me. Do you know, do you know that God is for you? You might be going through some pretty amazingly difficult times. Hi. Hi. You might be suffering consequences for things you have done. Hi. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt, thou, wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Oh, and of course, you, you know, we got to go right back to Romans chapter 8, okay? Look at verse 9 in Psalm 56. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. This I know. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, the called, according to his purpose. Mark, chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 14 on to verse 20. Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 20. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. This is before 
the Lord died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? This is before that. Okay? Doctrinally, still the Old Testament. Keep that in mind. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Shimon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. <clears throat> and straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Calling. When Jesus calls you. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Verses 22. On to verse 33. And straightway Jesus com constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the even was, evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, very quickly, some of these care Catholic, Pentecatholics, um, you know, these faith healer nuts, like to take this verse right here and say, we have that ability to do that today. <laughs> there are certain things we need to note here very quickly before we continue. Go back to verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. They were in a ship, surrounded by water, and it was being tossed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the wind was contrary, fighting against them. We see that, right? And then, in verse 28, Peter answered him, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. Good old Peter, the first pope. <clears throat> Congestion. Got out of the boat. Now that ship 
was in the middle of a sea, in the sea, being tossed, and the wind was contrary. But yet they were in the ship. And Peter says to the Lord, That's you. Have me come out to you. And the Lord says, Come. He got out the boat. And when Peter was come down on the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw, when he saw Peter, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. He saw the wind boisterous. Note that he saw the wind. And because he saw the wind, what was he not? Who was he not looking upon? I think we can figure this one out. This one's pretty simple, isn't it? But when he saw the wind boisterous, rough, okay, strong wind, he was afraid. He didn't have his eyes set before him. Who wasn't he paying attention to? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. He got distracted by the wind because he saw the wind was boisterous. And notice too right away here, and beginning to sink. He didn't go <laughs> and plummet like a stone right away. Like here he's walking like, uh, oh no, 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 no. He started sinking. Slowly. Sinking. Implies not immediate. So. Let's get this. Okay. Peter. Didn't have his eyes on who? Jesus. Because he was distracted by the wind being boisterous. And he was afraid of the wind around him and took his eyes off of Jesus. And he began to sink. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. He didn't fall immediately, sinking. Which, by implication, not right away. what happens when you take your attention off of what the Lord's doing and you see the wind boisterous you don't fall right away you begin to sink and the solution Lord save me Pretty simple, isn't it? And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? What did Peter doubt in? He definitely, here in the context, he surely didn't doubt in the wind, did he? Because it made him afraid and he started to sink. But see, he got distracted by everything going on around him. and wasn't keeping his eyes on Jesus. And when they were come into the ship, 
when they were coming to the ship, Jesus got in the ship with them. That's what you can take away from that verse. The wind ceased. I'll let you roll that one around in your head a little bit. Most of us know this one, but there are some of you who don't. Then, then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. God manifest in the flesh. And as we see in the book of John, the Father, these three are one. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and was distracted by everything was around him and he started to sink. He didn't go right away because he took his eyes off of Jesus and was more afraid of the wind. And the Lord's like, no, you, oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? See what I'm saying? And about Peter here, go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Verses 31 on the verse 38. Luke 22, verses 31 on verse 38. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Mm. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted. <coughs> converted. An example. You've heard of a convertible car? One that has a roof and you press a button and the and the roof goes down. It's a convertible. It goes from a car that has a roof to one that doesn't have a roof. Okay? When thou art converted. Let's continue. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter. The cock shall not crow this day, before that thou hast, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, <clears throat> When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, but now, but now, that's very important, because he was going very soon, in this very chapter, to be hauled off, to be crucified. Fulfilling prophecy, especially in Isaiah 53. Okay? Before, the king was there. But now the king, the Lamb of God, was going to go be crucified. 
to shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for our sins. Okay? That's, but now, and he defines it. When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything, and they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. Because the king is going to be crucified. The Jews rejected the millennial kingdom. Later on, after the uh, crucifixion, they rejected the gospel. That's why us Gentiles were brought in to make them jealous. I've covered that many times before. But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. Isaiah 53. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough to be armed, to be ready. But we also see here in verse 32 that Peter was not fully converted. And obviously, if we were to keep reading, not once, not twice, but three times. Peter denies the Lord with oaths and cursings. You could say that Peter once again saw the wind boisterous and was afraid. Look across your page at verse 57. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And then verse 58. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. It's two. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I, I know not... Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Again, we could say that Peter saw the wind now it was boisterous, and he began to sink. But we don't see that he caught, cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Can you imagine having the Lord look at you after you just did what he said you was going to do? Tell me something. 
brother, sister of the Church of the Living God. Have you ever been warned of something and you did it and you just know that the Lord is looking upon you after he warned you, told you, and you did it anyway? Hi. And if you're going to say within your heart, I've never done that. <coughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Luke chapter 9 now. Luke chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 26. And he said to them all, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 on to verse 26. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up your cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Play it safe. Go along. Not get out the boat. Get into your comfort zone. <laughs> it's not like I'm not guilty of that one. <laughs> but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall find it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world? And lose himself or be cast away. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words. Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory. And in his fathers. And of the holy angels. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Oh, brethren, there are brothers out there far greater, far more humble. Who are in samples unto all of us about taking up their cross daily and following him and denying themselves. Hmm. And for those of you who do that, may the Lord bless you. Luke 14, Luke 14, what is that, 25 on the verse 35 now, Luke 14, verses 25 on the verse 35 to close out that chapter, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. You know, oftentimes you'll hear you need to put Christ first. 
some people say that in such a trivial fashion, but the reality is, guess what? Christ must come first. Christ must come first. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, our example today in the time of the Gentiles on how to follow the Lord is given to us by the Apostle Paul. He is our example on how to follow the Lord today in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation which we are in. Paul is our example on how to follow the Lord for today. And we all know that Paul counted all things as dung and counted them but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. Just butchered that, paraphrased it, beg your pardon, but Paul counted everything. That he held in high esteem nothing. That he may know him, Christ crucified. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth and counseleth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good. But if the salt has have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You know, brethren, you got to remember the cost of following our Lord Jesus Christ. We also got to remember that our Lord is holy. And the calling is high. But the reward. Huh. What is it? Eternal weight of glory? Hmm. Now a lot of what the brethren are going through today. And what we are seeing, um, these divisions, huh. 
I guess we know now, don't we? <laughs> you know, today, brethren, I got to share with you. Today was quite a day for me, personally. Today, I lost my job. I lost my job today of 14 years. It was a combination of things. Um, I readily confess that I did kind of butt heads with the management. Um, I did. I also was not very... <laughs> I also was not very, uh, how you say, compliant when it came to the ha <laughs> and the nonsensical. Um, steps to prevent the spread. <laughs> the poison crown. Corona gonna get you. But also too, um, coupled with that, the place that I used to work will probably be closing this September anyway. After about 15 years. 16 years that place. Uh, will be open and I've been there for, I was there for about 14 so coupled with their financial peril and the fact too that I'm I'm 45 years old going to be 46 um, it was time it was time and there are a few brethren out there who uh know that today when this happened to me I I will confess after 12 years being saved I for a moment saw the wind boisterous I uh I talked to uh, my beloved brother Alexander Hartley and um what a beautiful man he is. Fine brother. If any of you get the chance to have um, any conversation at all with Brother Alexander Hartley, uh, the Lord will enrich you through that man. Just saying. But um, I talked to him and he was like, oh, whoa, whoa. But see, I saw the wind boisterous and I was afraid and I started to sink because I took my eyes off upon Jesus it can happen to anybody even those who have been long in the faith not that I have been And um, going forward into a future uncertain, but, and you know, I'm not the only one. I'm hardly the only one. Hardly. I remember uh, Brother Matthew Green politely once rebuked me on that. It's like, yeah, Brad, you're going through some, but remember, brother, <laughs> you ain't the only one, and amen. I'm not the only one. There are some of you out there who are going through such hardships <coughs> that are going through things that, you, you know, you see the wind boisterous. There are some of you who are being stubborn, 
refusing to submit to these Jesuitical maxims about the face masks and the propaganda. And every chance you get, or are given, I should say, you speak the truth of it. <laughs> and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You know, brethren, same afflictions are going on across the world with you, my brothers and sisters, in Christ, the Church of the Living God. When one member suffers, we all suffer with it. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. Weep with them with weep who weep, and rejoice with those who rejoice. I have... Uh, I've done my, you know, I've done my very best to live that and to weep with those who weep and to rejoice with those who rejoice. But I know that there are those of you out there who are going through even worse hardships than what I am. And it is a faithful saying. That if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. And whatever it is you're going through now, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, Brethren, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. In the Lord, praise I. His word. Hmm. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. 
Hold over my bearing absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only, always living in me. Sorry. Sorry about that. If, um, if you don't sing a hymn every once in a while there, brother, sister, you're, you're really doing yourself a dis disfavor. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. Thank you to all of you brethren who have prayed for me. And um, right now I'd like to, um, if you will, if not, that's fine. Bow your head with me really quickly for a word of prayer. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and bless you and thank you for the day that you have given each and one, every one of us, Lord. Lord, may, um, may your blessings rest upon the beloved Alexander Hartley. May you bless him and keep him. May your blessings rest upon Brother Alan Allen. May you strengthen him and guide him into all truth. Lord, may your blessings rest upon Brother Jeff Allen. May you keep him, guide him on into all truth and bless him. Merciful Father. Lord, may your blessings rest upon Brother Jacob Thompson. May you continue to strengthen him and guide him into all truth and Give him the grace he needs to finish the work that you have called him to do. Lord, may you continue to bless Brother Matthew Landau. May you strengthen him and quicken him and continue to use him for your glory. Lord, may you strengthen, bless, and quicken Brother Philip Newton. May you bless the work of his hands and guide him into all truth. Lord, may your blessings rest upon Brother Fer uh, Frederick Noon. May you keep him and continue to give him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And may you bless him abundantly, Lord. Our Lord, may you continue to bless and prosper Brother Jeff Jones, strengthen and quicken him. Merciful Lord. Lord, may you continue to bless Brother um, Victor Mahija. May you continue to bless him and guide him in all truth. Lord, may you bless abundantly. Brother Justin, may you keep him, guide him, continue to keep him strong. Lord, may you br uh, bless Brother Mario, that he may be a strong voice amongst his people. And may you also breath, uh, bless his brother, um, who um, I was kind of... <laughs> Slow to get back to him on an email, which we'll we'll do. We'll talk about that uh, later. But um, may you continue to bless Brother Mario. Oh Lord, may you bless Brother um, Christopher Lappin. May you continue to bless the work of his hands and strengthen him and guide him. Lord, um, Brother Matthew Green, may you continue to bless the work of his hands and. Uh, May you bring glory to yourself through the work that he does here on uh, YouTube. Lord, merciful Father, may you please bless Brother Aaron Judge. May you continue to strengthen him. May he in his meekness glorify you. May you be glorified through his work. Lord, will you please give our brother Aaron Daring Judge 
a new laptop. Hint, brethren. Hint. <laughs> oh, Lord, can you, can you please bless uh, my beloved brother, Jonathan, in Northern Ireland. Please bless him and keep him. Strengthen him. Merciful Lord, Father. Lord, may you have mercy upon us. May you strengthen us. Also, Lord, to uh, Brother Brian, his wife, Sister Catherine, and his sweet son, Oliver, may you continue to bless him and guide him. May you continue to use him for your glory. Strengthen him. And Lord, may we be comforted by your grace. May we all be humble before thee. Because we all groan to hear our names called, Lord. May you bless the brethren today. May you strengthen us. And um, I ask this all, Father, in your name, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please shower these beloved brethren with such blessings, with such abundant mercy and grace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Apparently, I'll see you next time.